My name is George Taylor and I'm a pediatric radiologist from Children's Hospital in Boston. And today we're going to be talking about renal injuries, both the clinical aspects of it and um, imaging strategies. Now, renal injuries in uh, blunt abdominal trauma are the, not the most common. They're behind liver and splenic injuries in frequency. And they happen in a range of between one and a half to 15 percent of all trauma admissions in children. Now, kids are at a much higher risk for renal injury than adults because they have a compliant chest wall. They have less packing, so less, less perinephric fat. The kidneys are more mobile in children than in adults. And there's a frequency of about 5% of congenital anomalies. And we'll talk about that as well. It's um, often associated with non urinary injuries in anywhere from 11 to almost 70 percent. And the injuries outside the GU system are lung, because it's very close, spleen very commonly, and, and liver as well. Here's a child who has a horseshoe kidney, and as you can see, the, there's a big tear in the kidney. And this child presented with a mac micros or macroscopic hematuria after just minor trauma. And you can see where minor trauma could really injure a kidney that's anterior to the spine and not well protected by the, by the rib cage. Here's another child. He's a 14-year-old skateboarder, fell and had um, gross hematuria. And you can see why. He had a, um, an unexpe unexpected greeteropelvic junction obstruction with a big hematoma and a tear um, of the, uh, the calyx in the surrounding uh, perirenal space, the perirenal hematoma. Here are two kids who had gross hematuria after really minor trauma. This four-year-old fell off his um, bed, the, the lower bed, not a bunk bed. And this child was punched in the stomach by his younger brother, and both had these massive hematomas surrounding the kidney. And it was because they had an unsuspected Wilms tumor. So Wilms is a very vascular tumor, and minor trauma can really bring them to light. Now, sometimes you'll also have other um, associated comor comorbidities where minor trauma can give you a significant injury. This is a child who has a large perinephric hematoma as well as a paraspinal and psoas hematoma. And um, we didn't know this initially, but the clinicians uh, finally told us that he had hemophilia. So a relatively small degree of trauma really led to a pretty significant bleed. Now, hematuria is one of the more common uh, clinical indications for CT and for an imaging evaluation. It's really common. Uh, more than 60% of kids have some degree of hematuria after trauma. And there is an increasing risk of, of injury with higher grades of hematuria. If you look at um, this graph obtained from one of these two studies, shows that if you look at the type of injury, clinically significant multiple organs or renal, that the frequency of uh, injury increases as you have a, a higher grade of hematuria. That's pretty reasonable. However, can you predict the severity of renal injury based on the grade of hematuria? What do you think? It turns out that you really can't. If you look at this graph here, children with minor renal injury, a lot of them had gross hematuria. If you, have, if you then look at children with major injury, although the risk of hematuria was much higher, there were also kids that had minor, minor grades of hematuria and some even had absolutely no hematuria at all. So the grade of hematuria doesn't predict the grade of injury, the absence of hematuria doesn't exclude renal injury, and equally important, if you have asymptomatic hematuria, it's a low risk indicator. So you have a child that had minor trauma, with hematuria and no belly pain, no abdominal distension, no bruising, 
no hypotension, that child has a much lower risk of having a significant renal injury. So what's the most commonly injured organ in children with hematuria? Is it kidney, bladder, spleen, or liver? Well, it's a little counterintuitive. It's actually the spleen. Um, it's um, injured more commonly than, than the kidney. In fact, the liver is injured more commonly in kids with hematuria. Isolated renal injury is actually a relative minority in these, um, these injuries. How does that happen? Well, it turns out that we think that most of the time um, when uh, with a splenic injury and you have a, a, um, a sideways um, mechanism of injury, that the spleen absorbs the greater amount of force. And so that becomes, that gives you a macroscopic injury. And then it contuses the, the kidney enough to cause bleeding, but not enough to really show it on, uh, on imaging. So that induces hematuria, uh, but you really don't see a major renal injury. Let's talk a little bit about CT technique in um, looking at, um, at renal injuries. CT, I think, is still the, the initial modality of choice. Um, it's not necessary to do a non-contrast arterial and venous phase. Just a single mixed venous phase is, is good enough and um, very effective. If you see renal injury, then a 10-minute delayed image uh, scan is important, and we'll go through why it's important. Now, ultrasound with ultrasound contrast is starting to show promise for the initial evaluation of, of renal injury, but it's a great modality in unstable patients, even without ultrasound contrast, and it's really the modality of choice for follow-up imaging so that these kids don't have to have repeated CTs. The kidney injury is graded very much like any other solid organ injury is graded from grade one, where it's a minor parenchymal injury, to increasingly deep uh, parenchymal injuries, to grade four that involves the, the collecting system, and grade five that involves the arterial system. The interesting thing about kids is that most of the injuries are grade ones and twos. Um, their grade fours and fives are relatively uncommon um, because even though they're not as well protected as adults, they're not as common an, an injury. Here's a child that has a normal contour of the kidney, but there's a decreased vascularity to the kidney. On, um, on other images, you could see that the arterial tree was completely normal. This is really a well-defined a well contusion to the kidney. Uh, he had increasing hematuria 10 days later, and you still see that, that there is a, uh, an area of, uh, of decreased uh, attenuation in that kidney. He recovered completely. And on um, color Doppler or power Doppler, you can see that there's uh, really uh, very little uh, contrast or very little vascularity to the upper pole of the kidney. Here's a grade three laceration where you see a deep laceration to the, the kidney with a large perinephric hematoma um, and the associated splenic injury as, um, as we had talked about before. This um, girl had a grade four injury which essentially is a shattered kidney without involving the, the vascular tree. And what we found interesting is at the same time, an ultrasound was done as baseline. And the most abnormal area here in the upper pole was actually the only area that was vascularized. This whole echo echolucent area was a large perinephric hematoma. And the lower pole here, uh, separated from the upper pole, was actually not vascularized. So we ultrasound can really be a very nice tool for looking at how, what percentage of the kidney is vascularized and following it up. What's amazing to me is to see how uh, fragments of kidney that can be so separate over um, 
weeks actually come together and reestablish a kidney that looks near normal um, after, um, after the hematoma goes away. This child has a, another grade four laceration where you have a, a large perinephric hematoma. The lower pole is not visualized um, on the, the coronal images. Here you see a little tiny bit of the, the, the kidney being vascularized. So the, the degree of injury is important because it predicts the frequency of, um, of requiring some sort of intervention, and we'll talk about it. Now, here's a delayed scan on that child with a grade four laceration. And you can see that there is extension of contrast, um, extravasated contrast, all the way along this uh, psoas hematoma and along the course of the ureter. Now, it's important also to see that there is a little bit of contrast going into the ureter. And that's a very useful predictor because if you don't see contrast, those kids are at a much higher risk of requiring a stent, um, a ureteral stent, in order to be able to, to uh, preserve renal function. So the delayed scan can be really, really useful. The other thing that happens with large um, um, injuries to the kidney is that initially the clot forms and is stable. But over the first week, the, the clot starts um, decaying and expressing fibrin, uh, expressing serum, and it starts falling apart. So it's not that uncommon to have a child feel better two or three days after the injury, and then the abdominal pain gets worse, and the degree of hematuria starts getting worse again. And so when you rescan the kids, you'll actually see that there can be active extravasation of contrast in urine within the hematoma and urinoma. That doesn't mean that this child is unstable, that um, he needs surgery right away. It's just a natural progression. We're just seeing it on CT. So this is an expected finding. Now, what percentage of renal injuries require surgical inter intervention? Is it the majority of them? Is it some of them? Or is it very few of them? Well, it turns out that it's far <coughs> less than, than 10% now. In this day and age, um, in the last 10 years at Children's in Boston, we've only operated on one kidney um, that was in a child who was very hemodynamically unstable. So if you have a child with a grade four, a larger, a higher grade uh, renal injury, and the surgeon goes in, what happens? The, as soon as they open up Gerota's fascia, that tamponade stops and the bleeding continues. And the only thing they can do is to cross clamp the, the vessels in the ureters and do a nephrectomy. So um, if the child is not him is stable, uh, the outcomes are actually very, very good by doing non-operative management. And every once in a while, when you have an unstable child, the other alternative that we've been using a lot more is, um, is angiography with uh, embolization. Here's a child that has a large shattered kidney with a tense perirenal hematoma, active extravasation of contrast, Despite um, ongoing fluid replacement, he was continuing to be unstable, so he was taken to intervention. And here you can see the, the two fragments of kidney completely separated, but still um, receiving blood supply. And this is the area of active extravasation. He was embolized and the bleeding stopped and he um, got better very, very quickly. The other interesting part of renal injuries is that a page kidney and post-traumatic hypertension is very uncommon in kids. It's, it's, um, it's actually quite rare. So the take-home points for renal injury are that gross hematuria is a strong marker for renal injury, but hematuria, th that renal injury is not the most common injury in a child with hematuria. Asymptomatic hematuria is a low-risk indicator and 
if you have gross hematuria after minor trauma, suspect that there is a congenital anomaly, a tumor, or what we didn't talk about in a younger child is um, non-accidental trauma. Thank you.